Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle. I'd like to begin a series of brief screencasts on the topic of foreign exchange risk. For my FRM candidate customers, the assigned reading is Anthony Sanders Foreign Exchange Risk. And the first topic is to be able to compute the risk and return of an investment in a foreign currency asset. To illustrate that, we use a very simplified balance sheet of a bank. We'll assume the bank is based in the US. So on the left we have assets, on the right we have liabilities. Very simplistic view of the balance sheet. And this bank is funded with 200 million in liabilities that are denominated in US dollars. So these could be CDs or deposits by customers that are costing the bank 8% as a cost of funds. Our bank decides to take the 200 million and divide it into two investments. 100 million or 50% is invested in US dollar assets. So these are loans that are denominated in US dollars where the bank has an expected return of 9%. The other 50% of the 200 million is invested in foreign currency. In this case, that's 100 million invested in British pound sterlings where the expected return is 15%. Now the bank has a positive expected spread in regard to both currencies. If we look at the US dollar, they're expecting a 9% against a cost of 8%. And in terms of the British pound sterling, the bank is expecting a return of 15% against a cost of funds of 11%. But in this case, the bank isn't funded at all in British pound sterlings. So although the bank may may in fact be matching the duration of assets and liabilities, it is not matching the currency exposure because it's funded entirely in US dollars and invested 50% in British pound sterlings. So to see how this works, Assume the spot currency exchange rate is $1.60 per British pound sterling. That's the spot currency exchange rate. And that means if we take the $100 here, that's going to be invested in British pound sterlings. Then we're going to convert it at the current spot rate. So that produces 62.5 million British pounds. And then that grows at the 15%. So you can see right here, I could re-enter this formula. That converted 62.5 million is invested at the 15% British, British rate to return at the end of the period, at the end of the year, 71.88 million British pound sterlings. And then let's just assume there's a steady state on the currency exchange rate. So that means right here at the end of the period, the currency exchange rate hasn't budged up or down. It's still 1.6 US dollars per British pound sterling. That gets converted back with a simple multiplication. So I can put this right here multiplied by the 1.6. And we see at the end of the period then, we have 115 million US dollars. So in fact, this half of the investment, 100 million grows at 15% as expected. That means that the return on assets is 12%. How did I get 12%? Well, half of the assets grow at nine, return to nine. The other half returned 15. The midpoint is 12 all of the liabilities are funded with an 8% cost of funds. So the return on investment is 12 minus 8 or 4%. Okay, so that's the scenario where the spot currency exchange rate doesn't move. Now, what happens if everything else is the same except the British pound sterling depreciates against the dollar or we could say the dollar appreciates against the British pound sterling. Now in that case, I'm following the Sanders example here. 
We're going to assume the British pound sterling depreciates from $1.60 to $1.45 at the end of the period. Now what happens? Here's the $100 million that is right here that is invested in British pound sterlings. It gets converted at the beginning of the period to 62.5 million British pound sterlings. That's the same. That's the beginning of the period. It then grows at 15% the expected foreign rate, at foreign interest rate, to 71.88 million British pound sterlings. That also is the same. However, what's different is now we translate back to US dollars at the depreciated British pound sterling. That means we get back fewer US dollars. In this case, instead of 115 million US dollars, it's only 104.22 US dollars because, why did this happen? Again, because we took 100 million converted it to British pound sterlings and invested in a depreciating currency. That depreciating currency directly offsets the returns. And in this case, produces a 4.22% return on this foreign investment, denominated in foreign currency. That means our return on assets, the blend between the two, is 9% on the US but only 4.22% on the domestic on the foreign and that gives us uh, an average of 6.61 but our cost of funds which are entirely in US is 8% and higher and we now have a negative ROI so that's the point the point is if we don't match or hedge the currency then this portion here this 100 million that is that is invested in the foreign currency the returns will be a function of the currency movement and it can work both ways consider instead if the british pound sterling british pound sterling excuse me appreciated to a dollar 75 per british pound per 1.75 us dollars per british pound sterling now at the end of the period our bank receives back more us dollars and now the sword has cut both ways and this time the currency just happened to move in favor of the bank because it invested this portion in an appreciating currency and now the ROI is even higher but the point is that's a risk factor because we are unmatched or unhedged between the liabilities that fund and the and the currencies that the assets are invested into I hope this was helpful. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.